So today's video is a little bit different from the previous videos I've been making and guys I have to tell you it's going to be a really long video so make sure you get some cup of tea I have mine here and you know get something to keep you busy because it's going to be really long and interesting and I would advise you to watch it till the end so that you can gather all the points that you need in case you're planning to move to my channel if you're a returning subscriber thank you for always coming to check out my videos and if you're new to this channel a special welcome to you this is the diaspora mom and i talk about everything finland from the point of view of a foreigner if this interests you do well to subscribe to my channel hit that notification button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up before leaving thank you today guys I'm going to start by telling you some of the ways that you can move to Finland and um, the easiest way you can move to Finland as a matter of fact and uh, as well as to any other country abroad is moving to join your spouse. The, your spouse is working um, and is making a certain amount of money on a monthly basis. The money should be able to take care of you with him and with any additional child if there is a child involved then the amount of money that your spouse requires to bring you to finland increases with any additional child so that means your spouse will also have a clean record have a permanent job and earning very well and it's really easy for you to join your spouse if everything is okay so that's about the easiest way to move to finland the second way is you're coming for studies so i myself i came to finland through studies and I have to tell you, it wasn't easy for me. It wasn't really easy. In fact, I got denied visa the very first time I applied. Uh, but luckily for me, the school, there was opportunity to extend your studies. So when I got denied the visa, I had to extend my studies to the next academic year. So the next year I met another applica visa application and you know that was the one that was granted and that was the one i used to travel so i didn't need to write additional entrance exam so there are lots of challenges and you also have to be open-minded when you're going through this process you have to know that you know it's either going to work or it's not going to work but whichever way you have to put in your all you have to put in all efforts so that you know that you tried your best if it works then it's good but if it doesn't work just know that you try your best you tried your best in that way you're not too hard on yourself the schools in finland have very good reputation abroad and you know graduates from Finland are well respected all over the world because of the standard of Finnish schools and some Finnish schools rank even you know high among the best schools in the world so for that reason the schools in Finland are really competitive especially the schools in the city so if you are planning to come to Finland from abroad uh, I would really advise that you have more chances when you apply to schools that are outskirts of the city in order to you know increase your chances because those schools in Helsinki, Turku, Tampere, they are really, especially the schools in Helsinki, they are really, really competitive. So if you want to come to Finland to study for bachelor's degree, um, the bachelor's degree in Finland is you pay for the tuition and it's 6,000 euros but there is also scholarship which you can apply for at the same time when you are applying for the university for most universities you make the application together and for some other universities you apply for the scholarship after you've gotten admission while other universities could give you the scholarship automatically when you've gotten admission now these scholarships are not fully funded um so this scholarship from the universities 
um, they can be like 50% off tuition fee. As a matter of fact, the cheapest university is Diaconia, where you can start paying as low as 2,000 euros per academic session in your from your second year. So otherwise, you can get universities as low as 3,000 euros on scholarship and you can continue to renew the scholarship every year. So um, the admission period in Finland usually starts between December and January. So and some schools require that you have IELTS and some schools, they do not require that. On universities in Finland, you have to take entrance exam for bachelor's degree and for master's degree usually there is um a couple of things you need to do you there is um an essay kind of you need to write and also it's for some schools you have to make a video presentation about something so for the entrance exams the schools will usually tell you what books you need to read or what topics you need to read to prepare for the exam and in some other cases where you don't need to read a book sometimes it's critical thinking so you don't need to prepare for anything when i did my nursing exam um for my school it was basically critical thinking and you know oral interview so there was no material to read uh, but at, at that time also some other schools like Akada University of Applied Sciences they gave um, a reading material which was based on which was anatomy and physiology so it's dif is different from schools but you don't need to worry because the schools will always give you uh, you know informations about what you need to read for bachelor's degree and for master's degree these schools will always communicate with you what you need to do so just before i continue i would like you to tell me in the comment section below if you would want somebody in the university setting to come and give you details about the fees that are involved and also you know how he or she is managing as a student so if you need that kind of information you can tell me in the comment section below so that in my next video i will have to bring somebody in to tell you because i graduated in 2015 so um i would if you would want to know about the school situations and the living situations for students now then I, I could bring somebody in and if you have watched this video until now please do consider to subscribe and like so that other people who need this information can also come across the video because the more you like it the more youtube will recommend my video to other people so having said that let's continue so let me answer some of the questions i have gotten um someone has asked me that um their school is starting in september and the embassy have not even called them for an interview that what can they do so my answer to that question is you really have to be patient uh, because the school cannot influence the decision of the embassy and they cannot also you know make the embassy to quicken your application process that is the job of the embassy and sometimes you can even gain admission in the school and for one or two reasons the embassy will not even grant you visa and there is nothing the school can do about it and also let me give you a clue if you have applied in Finland and you gain admission and you know the school have resumed you you have not yet gotten your visa or your resident permit um, so you can defer your studies you know you can defer your studies because as at the, at the time the embassy would want to grant you the visa if they think that you have missed a lot they will assume that you know you have missed a lot already so there is no point of you going this session anymore and they might deny you the visa so just defer your studies and you can reapply you know 
for the next year but all you have to do is to be patient with the embassy sometimes there is queue and there is nothing you can do to hasten the application process it's not by writing and it's not by writing to the school either because there's nothing the school can do as well so I've also gotten a question from somebody living in Nigeria asking that if you're a nurse, can you use your qualification to gain employment in Finland? And the answer is no. Um, if you're already a nurse in Nigeria and working as a nurse, if you move to Finland um, before you could work as a nurse, um, you need to enroll in the school and take up some courses, you know, to meet up with the with the standard of Finland, you cannot just come from Nigeria to Finland and straight to work as a nurse. And also you need to learn the language. Um, that's also a major challenge. Um, you need a lot of Finnish language to work as a nurse because in Finland, um, people have the right to get uh, medical uh, treatment in their own language. So um, you cannot communicate with people in English language. Uh, you have to communicate to them in their local language. So you also need the language and you also need to upgrade yourself. In some cases, you need to start again from the scratch um, to study nursing in the university. So <laughs> that is the answer to your question. So somebody has also asked me that how easy is it to move to Finland? And my answer to that is that moving to any country is not easy. Whether it's Finland or it's to any other country, as a matter of fact, it's not an easy process. It needs time, it needs resources, it needs efforts. It also needs you to have the right information so that you don't make mistakes. You need to know what to do so that you don't get denied um, visa or resident permit. So that's all. It you know, takes time, money, but um, it's not easy. And Finland is not uh, a cheap country. Finland is an expensive country to live in, as a matter of fact. So the beginning usually is not easy. So that's all I have to tell you. It's not easy, but it's possible and it's very much achievable because we are here so you know it's achievable but you need to put in some work to it well, the answer to that is that um in finland um most people are employed um and international students you know it's not easy to get a part-time job especially in your first year it's not that easy but with time of course you can manage to get some part-time jobs for international students but when you are coming uh, make provision that you know you might not get it immediately when you come into Finland it might take a little time but of course you might get you will definitely get a job and is it possible to survive without knowing Finnish? Well, the best way to fit into the society is to learn the language. But of course, when you come in the beginning, everybody understands that you're still new. So you can manage in the beginning. Uh, but when you get to the, you know, settling down in Finland, you really need the language. Of course, you can survive without the language, but you'll be happier and things will be easier for you when you know the language. You can also move to Finland as an au pair. And for au pair, there is um, a, web a Finnish website where you can see applications of um, people looking for somebody to take care of their children. And if the application suits you, you can apply and if they take you, that's it. Um, there is always a criteria for a pair. There is age um, specification. It has to be from 18 years until between 18 and 30 years. And um, there is a certain number of hours you can work. You, you are going to live with the people that you're taking care of their children. So they're going to give you a room and they will feed you. Yeah, and also you will get paid. 
So guys, apart from coming as an au pair, some special skills can also, you know, give you employment in Finland from abroad. Uh, as a matter of fact, during the summer, some people come from abroad to, you know, come to work and to do some summer jobs in Finland. So you just need to keep trying and a good place to, a good platform to search for these jobs are platforms like LinkedIn. So I'm going to end this here for today and if you have enjoyed my video don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be getting a lot when I post these kind of videos and also thank you once again for tuning in and staying until the end of my video. Until next time I'm still your favorite diaspora mom. Bye!